the final game of the night. What are you doing tonight watching Syracuse Utah? You can bet our college basketball writer Gary Parrish will be doing just that. Hey guys, Lauren Shahadi, welcome to the show. Gary, these teams have seen each other before. UConn had no problem with Syracuse. This is a bigger stage, a bigger moment. What's going to be the difference this time? Well, if you're Syracuse, you hope it's not the same difference as last team to beat. Game where he had 8 points, 16 rebounds, and 7 blocks, and really started to get the – look, he's always been a great defensive player, and people have known that, but that's when other coaches started saying it repeatedly over and over and over again, starting with Jim Beheim who called him one of the, the biggest forces in the history of this league. Um, the, the seven blocks were, the, were the, what showed up in the box score, but Jim Calhoun after that game said he affected at least 20 drives into the lane. 49 points in, when that game was Syracuse's lowest total of the year. Still to date, Syracuse starting front court in that game was 5 of 21 from the field. That is a direct result of the beat either being in the middle blocking shots or just affecting shots or intimidating shots. So, uh, Syracuse cannot let that happen again, and that means they cannot be dominated up front. And the way to do that, the best way, obviously, make some shots from the outside, which is what they did last night against Seton Hall, 9 of 18 from three-point range. If they can do something similar, they'll be in good shape. If they do that again, we're in for a closer game. All right, Gary, there are bubble teams and there are non-bubble teams. UConn is thought to be a number one seed in the tournament. Do they need this win to lock it up? Yes, I mean, I don't think there's any uh, scenario under which they can get uh, a number one seed without winning this because, um, you know, Louisville will probably knock off Providence. You would, you would think that uh, Pittsburgh would advance as well, and then those two teams would be um, in a better situation to get ones out of the Big East. And then there's still Carolina out there, um, Michigan State out there, teams like that. They could, uh, you know, Oklahoma who could get that, that fourth number one. So uh, no, you're absolutely right. If Connecticut wants a number one seed, it had better win this game, but it is also hilarious in a, in a testament to how strong the Big East is at the top. This UConn team was ranked number one in the country a week ago. It is the four seed in the Big East tournament. Gary, there's no room for error. That's what that proves. We spoke yesterday, and you were saying it's time to start playing your best basketball. Syracuse on a five-game win streak, averaging 83 points per game. Can they keep this momentum going, Gary? Well, the, the competition steps up a little bit. Let, let's be honest. What they've done recently on this five-game winning streak, they have not knocked off you know, a, a, a Pittsburgh, a Louisville, or something like that. It was St. John's, Cincinnati, Rutgers, a Marquette team without Dominic James, and then Seton Hall last night. Still, if you string five wins in the Big East, I don't care who you're playing, you're doing something correct. Last night, they, they looked okay in the first half, but in the second half, they, they, they pulled away, and it was all based on they moved the ball tremendously, and then knock down shots. 30 assists, 50% from three-point range. Again, anytime you can do something like that, you've got an opportunity to beat anybody. Well, Gary, you're talking about momentum. This is a UConn team, like you said, that fell out of the top spot in the AP poll. And going back to 2006 and 2007, they were beat by Syracuse in the tournament. What does that mean for momentum? Yeah, I don't know that it means anything in this particular game in terms of what will happen on the court. But from a from a mindset uh, uh, point of view, it could be a, a huge factor. Look, kids are kids, and they, and they tend to believe that they're capable of it, whether you play for Rutgers or St. John's or UConn or Pitt. Um, typically, you don't have anything to base that on, but if you can base it on, look, uh, either we've beat these guys before or, or the guys um, who were here before us beat these guys before. Again, you use anything you can use to get uh, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-olds to believe whatever it is you need them to believe. So from that standpoint, it, it could be an advantage. Mental toughness, right, Gary? And, hey, and whatever you need to get through the day, you take it. Uh, it sounds good. And you take CBSSports.com as your one-stop shop for everything March Madness. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk soon.